I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. I got a radio show. Just trying to give God some back. Just some back of what he didn't gave me. Just a portion, you know, just, I'm just trying, man, to, to, to show some type of gratitude for all his blessings. I'm just trying to, man, just, just get it right sometimes. You know what I mean? I mean, man, you just can't do what you want to do and just live wrong all the time, man. You got to, at one point in time, Steve, come on, man. Come on, man. You could do better. I know you can. You know, and, and, and you know what I had to do? I had to stop saying, I'm going to try to do better. And I just had to say, hey, man, I'm going to do better. You know, uh, tr trying is just to put forth an effort, and then if it don't work, well, okay. But if you make up in your mind that I'm going to do something, then trying isn't enough. It's getting it done is the only thing that matters. See, it's the difference between doing and trying. We're going to try to win the game, or we're going to go out here to win the game. Now, trying to win the game means that you could lose. But when you got in your mind made up, most athletes will tell you that they go out there with the full intent and purpose of winning and winning only. See, they don't put the second place finisher on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Second place don't get you there. You, you got to win. And now take it out of the scope of athletics, but keep it in that type of, type of analogy. In life, man, you just want to, you want to win in life, don't you? I mean, at the end of the day, don't you want to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated of Life? Don't you want to be recognized for your hard work? Don't you want, you know, to be recognized within the bonus structure down at your job? Don't you want to have your plaque up on the wall down at your job? I mean, most people do. Some people could care less. Some people don't care about looking good or being their best. And that's cool, but I ain't talking to them, though. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to those of you who who, who want to be the best you can be. You know, people, people kill me when they get mad at, at, at people. And hey, he brown nose and he all up on the employee of the month. Man, the dude doing his job to the best of his ability and he getting recognized for it. What's that got to do with all that you talking about? Cause you ain't up there. You know, it's amazing, man, how people describe other people's success. He's so lucky. Lucky. Hey, man, don't they kind of get you a little bit when people call you lucky? When, let me tell you what luck really is, y'all. Luck is when hard work bumps up into opportunity. Some people call that luck, but hold on. Let's, let's think about this. If you wasn't working hard and opportunity presented itself, what would you call that? But see, when you've been working hard and opportunity presents itself and it bumps up into each other, now people want to call that luck. But hold up. Here go the part though that they ain't paying no attention to. Yeah, that opportunity came by, but if you had not been working hard and the hard work had not ran up into opportunity, what would you have? No, sir. It's not luck. It's work. It is work. Because there's a scripture that says faith without works is dead. But my mama was a Sunday school teacher. She taught me enough, though. Now, I know the difference between right and wrong just like you do. You ain't got to, you know, it, it kills me when people write a strawberry letter. Am I wrong for this? You know, good and well, look at, let's read your letter. Are you wrong for this? You know, you're wrong. What you don't need us to be telling, you know, but I'm going to do this anyway. Well, see, go ahead, though. Do what you want to do. But you know what, y'all? Here's the best advice I can give you. And this is what I really uh, came to talk about this morning, but I got sidetracked because I listened. Get out of your own way. So many of us are blocking our own blessings. We're just in our own way. We are in our own way. And one of the most dangerous ways you can get in your way is to do it your way. To get it figured your way and to lock in on your way and this the way it's got to go. Do you know how many people are blocking their blessings? Do you know how long I blocked mine with that mindset right there? Look, cause it's the way you do it. You think that make it the right way? You think jazz cause you done thought on it long and hard and that's what you really want. Do you really think that your way is the right way or could there be a better way? See, until I started listening to God, and start paying attention to his way, man, I was spinning my wheels, man. I was out here so determined this is how I was going to do it. But, you know, I had to learn how to get out of my own way because just because I could do it my way didn't mean it was the right way. I had to get out of my own way. Just get out your way, man. 
Now, what 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 does that mean? That means, see, set your goals. That means have your dreams. That's I'm I'm saying set your goals, man. I ain't saying don't set goals. Listen to me. Set your goals. What is it you want to happen? What is it you'd like to have? What is it you'd like to be? What do you aspire to? Set your goals and set your dreams. Now, take your goals and your dreams to God and ask God to show you how. Man, you can save yourself a lot of pain. Listen to somebody who did it his way for so long. And when I finally got out of my way, out of my own way, when you've heard old people say, let go and let God, you've heard them say that. I didn't, I didn't get it, but I got it now. Let go and let God. And it's an amazing little saying though. Now, you know, you may not get it now. It, it took me a bunch of years to get it too. But when I took my goals and my dreams and my vision to God, and I said, God, this is what I hope for. This is what I aspire to. This is what I want to be. This is where I would love to get to. Then I said, help me. Show me how. Point me in the right direction. Let me follow your footsteps. Guide me. Hey, give me a, a spirit of discernment. Show me who wrong. Because I meet people every day, ain't up to no good with me. Every single day. Oh, man. Man, I can't believe I run up into you, man. The Lord told me something was going to happen to me today. Well, see, I talk to him every day. He did not mention you to me. He he ain't said nothing to me. He didn't tell me what was going to happen in my Now, that don't mean it can't happen because I'm open to it. So really, man, I'm, I'm and, I, and, I, and and please know I'm listening as well as I've ever listened before. But But get yourself together, though. See, know your goals and your dreams and then let God show you how to do it. He'll do it. You know, it's so important, everybody, that you get focused, that you aim for something, that you dream of something, that you aspire to something. But it's the most, the best thing you can do after you do all that. Man, get God involved in it, man. Talk to him. I mean, why would you not? What you got to lose? You ain't got to go down there and make no big scene and, and run laps around the church and run up there and throw yourself on the altar and scream and flip over and throw money in the air. You ain't got to do that. This you and God, man. It's you and God. You know, you got to serve and praise him the way you do it. You got to let nobody else tell you how it's done. It's a personal relationship. People kill me if you don't do it this way, if you don't come here to this church and you don't run around in this circle and you don't get flipped in the hand, you don't, hey man, you better go have a relationship with God, see what that's about. You understand? Don't nobody throw you off with all that, all right? All right, y'all, talk to him. He'd love to hear from you today. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I'm Penelope Spheris. I'm a film director. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Back in the 70s, Peter Ivers moved to L.A. to start his music career. He scored Ron Howard's directorial debut. I didn't know one thing about Peter Ivers. I just said, okay, <laughs> let's meet him. And even hosted a late night cable TV show. It showcased L.A. punk bands in all their glory. The crowd started getting bigger and bigger, and then there was Beverly D'Angelo. There was John Belushi. But then it all went to hell. Peter was murdered. Peter Ivers was murdered on March 3rd, 1983, and it raised a question that 40 years later, we still don't know the answer to. Who killed Peter Ivers? Listen to Peter and the Acid King on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, it is upon us. It is the morning hour. It is a moment that we've uh, been waiting for all night, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was hoping I would be here when it arrived. I am here grateful, motivated, favored, and relentless in my pursuit of happiness. Even mm. though the Constitution is not talking to us, <laughs> I am in pursuit of my inalienable right to that pursuit of happiness. Damn it, here I am. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Shirley Strawberry. I like it, Steve. Good morning. Good morning. And Carla mm-hmm. Pharrell. Good morning. Happy Friday. Never mad. Mm-hmm. What's the up? legend that is Junior. What up, Unc? What up, everybody? Morning. The old and nearly defeated and very bitter about it. <laughs> <laughs> but a survival, J. Anthony Brown. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, Mr. Harvey? Ignorant at a whole nother level. PhD in it. Mm. Nephew mm-hmm. Tony. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's <laughs> Friday. It's Woo! It's happening. Friday. F R I T Y. It's Friday. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. That's great. And and you don't like Fridays, why, nephew? Because it's too close to Monday. Ooh, that oh. makes a lot of sense. Oh. Yes, but sir. you sounded excited about yeah. Friday. I get excited till sad to come call. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this logic right here, man. We right up on Monday Ooh, again. God, dog. So let me ask you a question, Tom. <laughs> sure. What, so what are you holding day your head, Steve? Are you happy with <laughs> What day am I happy with? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. What's, what's your favorite day? Because every Thursday, Thursday is too close. Thursday, to I like Thursday. Why Thursday? Because we almost it like the weekend starts for me actually on Thursday. But it being sad, I I start but no ho 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 ho. But if you don't like the next day, which is Friday, because it's too close to Monday, uh, and that's why I'm trying to piece this together. Absolutely. Struggling over here. You holding Thursday. your head like you got a headache. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got better stuff to do. Oh, you got two shows. This is your you nephew. You ain't got to do worry about this. This ain't nothing you got to think about. You know what you're Thursday is, is four yes, days away from Monday. Why are you working your brain? Thursday is four days away from Monday. Either, either way you go towards it. Think about it. Monday is just bad. So Thursday is four ways away, either way you look at it. Well, and see what you I don't think understand the reason is, why mm-hmm. you saying Thursday and Friday and using Monday because you can't say Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> the truth will set you free. Oh, I can yeah. say I can say Wednesday anytime I want to say Wednesday. You can say what? That's cold. Man. I can say Wednesday anytime I want to say Wednesday. No, well, that's not it. All right, listen. Uh, <laughs> coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew to run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time to start your morning off with the nephew and run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Right now, we in a stupid category, and that belongs to me. All right? Praise Dance Team is the name of this prank. Praise Dance Team. Cat Dog, if you would. Hello? This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How you doing? I'm looking for uh, Sister Tanya. This is Sister Tanya. Sister Tanya, this is Brother Fuller from the church. How are you? Oh, I'm well, Brother Fuller. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um... Uh, we wanted to give you a call about the uh, about the praise dancing that's at the church. First of all, I wanted to really show you how much uh, uh, you're doing a great job over there with the praise dancers, and you you definitely do a great job on uh, every third Sunday that you guys actually perform. Everybody seemed to really like it. Well, thank you, thank you. What can I do for you today? There is a bit of a situation with um, you know it's been brought to our attention. We actually had a small gathering, a little meeting about it, and wanted to. I've been elected to actually give you a call. And who is this again? I'm sorry. Who are you again? Uh, Brother Fuller. Uh-huh. And, and 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 who had a meeting? Uh, some of the brothers at the church and and uh pastor actually sat in for a moment on it, and uh, I was actually elected to actually just give you a call. It, it, nothing that I don't think we can't get uh, rectified and, 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 you know, move on smoothly as we normally do. But I, I just think it's, we wanted to reach out to you and kind of make you aware of it, if it's a, a, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, and what things are those? Well, Sister, Sister Tanya, has any of the... Praise dancers um, before they became praise dancers was 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 any of them strippers? I, I beg your pardon. Was any of the praise dancers that at the church that you have uh, uh, on the praise team right now was any of them strippers in the past? I'm sorry, sir. I don't I don't really know who you are, um, and I don't really understand this line of questioning. Like I said, I'm, I'm brother Fuller. I don't think we've met, but uh, I, like I said, I've been elected to give you a call now. now 
it, it seems like what happened is this past week when you all actually uh, danced, it seemed like a couple of the girls was actually gyrating during the praise routine. Say hey, what? Gyrating. Brother Fuller, I don't know who you are, and I don't know what you saw. None of my girls were gyrating. They were dancing for the Lord. Well, some, some, and I think some, if you look through your Lord's eye, perhaps you would see them better. Instead of maybe you were looking through the gyrating eye. No, no. Well, see, a couple of the girls, we can point them out. A couple of them have uh, a st- 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 strip girl tendencies, evidently, because some of them have been driving. Strip, 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 strip girl tendencies. You know what? Sir, uh, I think we need to uh, complete this call. Perhaps I need to call Bishop and speak to him myself because, you know, I don't know what you do all day, but I have a real job. And I'm sitting here holding a conversation in my office about gyrating strippers in the church. Are you kidding me? Ma'am, listen. Now, here's a couple other things that, that they're talking about. The, some of the girls' uh, feet are real ashy when you all are performing, and they want to see if maybe you can you – can, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if y'all need the grip or whatever that y'all don't y'all don't put lotion on. I, we're not sure what that is. Um, as well as the the the, the, uh, the toenail polish. Everybody has three, four, five different designs and everything. Is it any way y'all can be in unison with your toenail polish? But the most important thing is the gyrating doing the dance routine. I don't know what your feet look like. I don't need you calling me, talking to me about my girls, their feet, their nail polish. Perhaps your mind should be on Jesus instead of on them. How about that? A hard you know, man I, for no, my no, mind no, no, no. to be. I don't have time. I don't have time. It's, I don't, I don't it's hard for my mind to be on Jesus when somebody's shaking their butt at the church. Now, that, that's the problem. Well, you know what? Look, I'm at work. Now, I'm trying to keep a work tone. You're going to make me curse up here. Now, let me tell you something. Don't call me anymore. I will deal with Pastor. If he has something to say with me, he can say it to me personally. But I'm done with this conversation. Are you going to deal with the gyrating is what we want to know. Maybe, you know what, it it just hit me. Maybe you're one of the ones that's doing the gyrating. Look, let me tell you something. My girls ain't doing no gyrating, and neither am I. Now, I am done with this conversation. Do you understand me? But but listen. I'm done. Are you done with the gyrating? That's what we want to stop. So we we can't praise the Lord if the booties is shaking. You know what? Sir, look, I I got to go to work. I got to go. Now, I, I, again, I don't know what your issue is. It sounds to me like you have an issue with gyrating booties. I have not heard so much gyrating booties in one conversation in my entire life. Now, my mind is set on Jesus. I don't know what your mind is set on. Well, Sister Tanya, before you was the praise dance uh, 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 ministry, over the ministry, did, did you ever use to strip? No, I didn't do no stripping. Now, did your wife do any stripping? Uh, did your mama do any stripping? What, what did you, what you, heard, what, you heard what I said. You heard what, how you like when somebody called you and asked you if your mama did some stripping? How you like that? I got All I'm sa- you know what I want to know? When is the next rehearsal? That way I can come and pick out who it is that's doing no, no, this. No, 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 no. You don't have you don't have any business at my rehearsal. I don't want to see you at my rehearsal. I don't want to I don't want to see any parts of you in my rehearsal. If I see you near one of my girls, that's why I'm coming up to you myself. Do you understand me? We need to find out who's doing that job. You don't need so to find out. You need to stay your butt in your own house. And, and, and I'm glad y'all ain't dancing when the plate is being passed, because there ain't no telling how you act with them wands coming through that. You know what? That's it. That's it. You call me disrespecting me? I'm at work. I can't even handle this no more. You know what? Don't call me no more. Don't look at my girls no more. Matter of fact, come near the church and see what I got for you. I want to know if you're going to stop the job rating. When well, is no, you going to stop do it for thing. moving? That's, I'm not going to do it. Thing. Who you think you talking to like that? You supposed to be a, a, a minister, a minister to you. Dude, I'm done listening to you. Now I'm getting ready to go. Well, I got one more thing to say to you before you leave. Now you ain't got a thing to say to me. I said I was done. And I said I got one more thing to say as you listen. You know what, man? Get off my phone. I'm going to say it anyway. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your entire praise ministry congregation, all your girls, got me to prank phone call you. Oh, I'm a shitty for real. Oh, oh, oh! They got me cursing on the radio. Oh, hey, oh, oh, oh! I think I'm gonna have to. Hey, I got one thing to ask you, Tanya. What's what that? is the baddest radio show in the land? Nobody else but the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> It don't get no stupid ta 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 than that. <laughs> okay? Don't get no stupid ta 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 than that. It will be more stupid. Stupid is making stops around the country. And the next stop 
is Stockbridge, Georgia at the bridge. It's the bridge ample theater. You don't want to miss it. That's me. That's the lovely Monique, the legend herself. That's Rodney Perry in the building. That's Dominique in the building. And I believe that boy Tony Roberts, oh Lord have mercy, is in the building. All right. Thank you, nephew Tommy. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right now, it is time yeah, for Ask the CLO, oh, wow. Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in oh, the building. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. So here we go. This one is from Tanjula in Mississippi. Tanjula writes, I'm a 32-year-old professional woman by day and at night. I'm an escort. I keep mm. a low profile in my city and go to the neighboring city for my escort business. I've been dating a guy for almost three months, and he thinks I'm a school teacher and model because I met him at a casting call for models for a music video. I need my side gig to pay off my student loans. But I know this guy won't like it. Should I be honest with him or keep the lie going? Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Yeah. So she says she does what in the daytime? She's a professional woman, she says. She didn't say specifically, but at okay, night. So she's an escort. Yeah, at mm-hmm. night. So uh-huh. what, what, is, what is the lie she's trying to keep going? That she's escort. an escort. That she's an escort. She wait a minute. To, she's an escort to pay off her student loans, Steve. Well, wait a minute. How, how, how did he meet her? Um, it says she she met him. Um, she's been dating him. She he at thinks a she's a school teacher. She thinks he's a school teacher and a model because she met him at a casting call for models. Oh, so oh, for a music okay. Video. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So he didn't call the escort service and meet her. No, no sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> he he met her at the thing. So he think. Yeah, well, he doesn't know. Uh, the junk, the jello. <laughs> Man, Did you say oh, the jello. Oh, 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 wait. Do do her name sound familiar to you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, ain't like her damn name was Denise and I missed her. <laughs> Give her you some advice. Don't get mad. <laughs> well, first of all, change your damn name. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, everybody going to know who you are. <laughs> your name at the escort service or down at the school board. <laughs> Tagula is very rare. So... I, look, look. Hey, look, <laughs> young sister. Joke, you can't be so desperate to pay off your student loans that you'll do anything. Your reputation and your life forward after this is far more important than the present. And always understand that what you do in the dark today going to come out in the light tomorrow. And it may ruin an opportunity with a career move or a man. So if I were you, I would double think this escort service business. It's paying off student loans ain't that important. They got all types of things available because of COVID now with student loans. You need to go online and research some of this stuff. They got programs to help you pay off student loans. You ain't got to sell yourself to pay off no damn loan. Think about your life moving forward. You're 32. You're an attractive girl. So you think you should? she should be honest with him? No. Hell no. <laughs> okay. Jeez, Keep the line no. going. Keep no. the line going. <laughs> your job is doing the day you're a professional woman. That's your damn job. Do not tell this man you're an escort. Okay. Just get out the escort business. This ain't the time for the truth. Where y'all keep getting this from? <laughs> That gets on your nerves. Man, all this truth y'all be trying to tell. Uh, Too much honesty. No, nobody want to hear that. Dude, dude be liking you. Now you're going to tell him you're a damn escort. He ain't going to take you and meet his mama. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we're moving on. Uh, Ginger in Mobile, Alabama says, uh, my husband and I bought a a townhome in a part of town with a lot of young families. We're in our early 60s and downsized when we retired. The family's two doors down has a daughter that's a senior in high school, and she's got a boyfriend that's always around. Saturday, my husband and I saw this girl and her boyfriend making out in the car parked in front of our house. My husband is the type to mind his business, but not if if it's in front of our house. Should we tell her parents about this? No, that ain't your business. You ain't never been in high <laughs> school before. Moment. That ain't your damn Man. business. What? 
What is you talking about? <laughs> Mind your damn business. Y'all the one move y'all old ass down there with all the young people. <laughs> Now, if you should have stayed your ass where old people can't climb in back seats and do nothing. <laughs> no, tell, tell her parents what? Stop. It ain't your business. Your husband is the type to mind his business. You should, too. And what mm. good is telling it going to do? All they're going to do is go somewhere else and sneak. Yep. Just, you can't raise that house. little girl. That ain't mm. your business. Mm. Mm -mm. The hell is you over here for? <laughs> Because they downsized. Downsized. Go to senior citizen home if you that damn old. <laughs> Candace Gosh. in Philly. We're moving on. <laughs> Candace in Philly says, my mother and my crazy aunt may be sharing a man. My aunt and my stepdad have an inappropriate friendship. My aunt introduced him to my mom, but I think they used to mess around before that. We all went to my aunt's house last month for a cookout, and my aunt was sitting on my stepdad's lap. I noticed her suddenly grinding on his lap, and when she realized I saw it, she jumped up. I told my mom what happened, and she said they like to joke around like that. How can my mom be so blonde? Because your wow. mama like jokes. <laughs> oh, She okay. said they joking around. Mm. Your mama probably laughing her ass off somewhere. Once again, if it... It, this ain't your damn business. What is wrong with these letters today? This, these grown-ass people, consulting adults, your aunt was on her sister's husband's lap, grinding, yeah. saw you and jumped up. Yeah. Now, he had to stay seated. For <laughs> obvious reasons. Yeah, obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm trying to figure out. Now, then you done already went and told your mama, and your mama told you they joke around like that. Your mama might already know what's going on. Your mama might be playing or something. Go Ooh. stay. Why is your young Ooh, ass like in a this? murder? <laughs> See, that's right. See, the other people uh -huh. was too old to be in this, and now you too young to be in this. <laughs> Just the worst damn CLO question we ever had. <laughs> All these nosy ass people. So the bottom line, everybody mind your own business. Mind right. your damn business. <laughs> Write Coming in up. here about something about your life. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I'm Penelope Spheris. I'm a film director. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Back in the 70s, Peter Ivers moved to L.A. to start his music career. He scored Ron Howard's directorial debut. I didn't know one thing about Peter Ivers. I just said, OK, <laughs> let's meet him. And even hosted a late night cable TV show. It showcased L.A. punk bands in all their glory. The crowd started getting bigger and bigger. And then there was Beverly D'Angelo. There was John Belushi. But then it all went to hell. He was murdered. Peter Ivers was murdered on March 3rd, 1983. And it raised a question that 40 years later, we still don't know the answer to. Who killed Peter Ivers? Listen to Peter and the Acid King on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Something about Mary Poppins? Something about Mary Poppins. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. This is fun. I'm AJ Jacobs, and I am an author and a journalist, and I tend to get obsessed with stuff. And my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. We are living in the golden age of puzzles. And now you can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears for 10 minutes or less every day on The Puzzler, short and sweet. I thought to myself, I bet I know what this is. And now I definitely know what this is. This is so weird. This is fun. Let's try this one. <laughs> Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's awful, and I should have seen it coming. 
All right, it's time for something funny, Steve. Uh, We want you to try and help people get their next job simply by crying, okay? I'm going to tell you what this is all about. It says, breaking out some tears may help you land your next job. During a job interview, you definitely want them to remember you, and it turns out a few tears just might do the trick. While you may think that crying during the interview process would blow your chances of getting a job, there are some people who say it actually works wonders. So, <laughs> okay, well, let's go there. Okay, we're in a job interview. So come on, you Tommy. and Carla are interviewing me. Oh, Tom, uh, I know Tommy. Tommy. Yeah, yeah, let Tommy yeah, interview Tommy. you. Yeah, okay. And go so, uh, let's go and let's start the interview. <laughs> let's start the interview. Here we go. Well, good morning, Mr. Harvey. How are you today? Hi, how are you, Mr. Harvey? You, Miss uh, Strawberry, Mr. Miles. Oh, thank you for having me. Such an opportunity. All right, so Mr. Harvey, let's get started. I wanted to ask you, what what exactly, um, what makes you qualified for this job? Well, having had several jobs before that gave me the experience of the exact uh, thing that you folks are looking for, it's pretty much made me qualified. And, you know, everybody that I've ever worked with have always said I was really just overqualified. So, here. What? Well, um, l- let me ask you something, uh, Mr. Harvey. Uh, why did you leave your last job? Oh, God. What happened? so difficult that you bought this up. Yeah. I, uh, well, <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> Do you need a mom? I was, um, well, I was uh, there for... 16 years now. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, you know, they, they just came in and it, oh my God. they just closed it. I mean, it's, <laughs> they, they just shut the, shut the doors. Well, let me, I was in the parking lot when it ha- happened. <laughs> I was standing there and it happened. Shane, I was got Shane. <laughs> Put the chain on the door. <laughs> Are you crying, Mr. Harvey? No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, it was just so traumatic. I just chained the door. My... The job interview. Composer. Mr. 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 Harvey, right. let me jump in here. Uh, okay. I just made uh, cookies yeah. take before. Her. They were all in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Go, go ahead, Go ahead, sir. Tommy. I wanted to ask you, Mr. Harvey, um, you, you know, a job like this, you're going to be working with a lot of people. You're going to be doing a lot of interacting. Uh, you know, how do you, do you have the skill set to actually interact with other people? Yeah. Excuse yeah. me? Yeah. Huh? I've interacted. Quit slamming the damn door. I'm sorry. This doesn't take much. We see. Oh, uh, yeah. I interact with people from time to time. You know, it's just talking about it sort of gets me. You know, other than I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine with other people. Well, um, Mr. Harvey, this is a uh, sales position we're um, looking to hire you for, and we just want to make sure that you're the right person. As uh, Thomas mentioned earlier, you have the right qualifications for this position. You have to interact with people. You have mm-hmm. to sell our product, and right. you know, people buy you first before they even buy the product so i I just want to make sure that that um you know this little crying thing i hear um it's it's not really um... listen wait 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 oh jeez i don't just i don't i don't cry wait i got a question for you what are you i don't just cry you know all the time sounds like you do (laughs) i'm I'm out of work i'm crying because i'm out of work yeah, there's no crying at work. Uh, no, I don't want, I'm not here yet. <laughs> if you hire me, I can stop. <laughs> you, you can cry too if you want. When, 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 <laughs> God. Go ahead, Miss Carly. Now, what, what are your strengths? Let's talk about something positive. What strengths? Are One of my strengths is crying. I can. <laughs> no, I can, I can absolutely pull it together. <laughs> really? I, that's one of my strong suits. I, I promise you, I can. You just hire me. <laughs> you just give me the job, and you'll see. And this is like instant. If someone would just say you're hired, I can, <laughs> I can begin <laughs> to show you. Put up the city here in the eighteenth interview. 
This is the third level. This, this is supposed to be it. I was told by your supervisor mm-hmm. that it wouldn't, we wouldn't even be in here this long. Now, here I am, and we still talking. Hey, you got no job. <laughs> well, this is that's why it's called a process, Mr. Harvey. A oh, process. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, father. The interview oh, Lord. process. Lord, must I suffer? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Tommy, you got any more questions? Oh, I can't believe um, Hire well, him so he'll stop, please. Well, let's let's evaluate Miss Shirley Strawberry and okay. Carla. Do you think we have the right person for the job? Well, How about we let this person sell themselves in 30 seconds to us? Okay. okay yeah, that sounds good. Too. Yeah. So, Mr. Harvey, could you sell yourself for 30 seconds to us, please? Okay, hold on. Here we go. You, you, you need a moment? You want to go out? Yeah, just let me know when the 30 seconds. Okay. okay, and you can start now. And now. And I believe that I'm uh, extremely qualified for this position due to the fact that I'm uh, probably the most experienced candidate that you'll meet from time to time. I've also uh, discovered that I have several traits that uh, this company's lacking and I can be a most fulfilling factor in developing the absolute direction of the, your firm and your company. I will Ten be nothing left, but an asset. And that is why I think I should have the job. Okay. Well, All right. Okay. He said a I mouthful right there. No tears. Okay. Right. Uh, if you're asking me, I would say he's hired. Oh, oh God. God. Like you're, just- <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Come on, Steve. Anthony Brown is here to murder another hit. Ladies what? and gentlemen. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't want to delay. Yes, you are. But he is here. <laughs> don't be alarmed. I was doing something. And we're doing something. It's called your show. <laughs> your radio. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Do it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Why are you yeah, out of breath? I was just out of breath from follow, <laughs> following Steve. <laughs> First I did the Ken do. That took a lot of breath. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. They're letting all of that. Hi, right, everybody. It's Halloween. Here's a Halloween ditty for you on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Check it out. holding out their hands I think that big one was 23 Grown folks holding babies They come from all over Interrupting me while I'm watching TV How many Donald Trump will I see? Screaming, mooing, lying, nice try. Why, God? Trick or treating is a child thing. Such a scary face. Hey, you can bet. I'll be set. The Jay, the Ant, Funny, the Brown, the Spot, y'all. But I don't want to brag. Too many babies. Too many babies. Too many babies. Damn, I hate Halloween. That's fire right there, Jay. I'm going to play it at my wife's uh, Halloween carnival in the backyard. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that she's throwing yeah. for all the grandkids. That's going to be great. I'm going to play it. Too many babies. Too many babies. Damn, I hate Halloween. <laughs> I'm going to play that in the backyard speakers. Hey, this year, I'm going to dress up all in right, healthy. Uh, <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, listen up. Here's a good one for you. A social media question we found on our Facebook page. 
what if before dating someone new, and I know you guys are married, but uh, mm. you needed two different references from exes, even if you before you oh. got married. How about that? You needed two different references mm-hmm. from your exes. Mm-hmm. Here's the question. Which of your exes would be your two references and why? And... What would they say? What do you think they'd say? No. Come on, Kier, Mm-mm. Junior, no, Shirley. Spate. No. <laughs> Let's no. go. We, no, no we're not good. doing none of my exes, but we can go is back to vacation Bible school and get somebody out of there. Go get okay. nobody in my adult as life. A, as a reference. Yeah, as a reference. You need somebody who was in church to talk about I me. I was going to tell you, uh, both of my references was from the fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's hear it. And uh, what they would say about me uh, is, What would they say? He showed so much promise, and he was trying to overcome a stutter. <laughs> <laughs> and he was determined. <laughs> just glowing, Steve. Just and a just, glowing and remark. Ju- and, and just the way he wore his older brother's clothes. It was just <laughs> yeah. fascinating. The way he would double wrap his belt around his thin, frail, de- underdeveloped body. Mm-hmm. And uh, his ability to cut out cardboard, to sh- the shape of his shoe and stick it in there so you never even knew that the bottom of his shoes had holes in it. He was mm-hmm. just oh, amazing. Wow. This yeah, he was be. he was really I always if girl if you ever get a chance his sliding board skills he this boy could he would go up to the top of the step and jump halfway down the sliding board before his butt even hit it and then be fly up in the air laying on his feet you should mm, I always knew so, he was gonna be something you've been on the, this earth for sixty three years mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the reference Fifth from grade. your ex <laughs> we going back to when you were ten yeah. Fifth grade. <laughs> Yeah, love all right, the all right. Love it. You think that's something? Okay, Tommy. Okay. What about you? You think that was what? something from from Uncle? Yeah. Steve? What about you, Tommy? What? Your exes. What? what would they say? And who would they be? Come on. Uh, 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 uh. I'm, st- I'm so scared right now, Shirley. I'm married. I'm just so scared. I say the I, dumbest I, things ever on this it. show. I know, but I found out earlier this week she's been listening all week. I'm just, I'm scared over my damn mouth right now. Thank I you, am. Jackie. We love you, Jackie. Mm-hmm. Got out of the day. I, I'll tell you what they said because I knew all of them. Okay. Oh, please. Yes. Uh, come, on. come on, Steve. You know, uh, yes, girls, I would, I would recommend him. You know, he, <laughs> he, he kept all his promises, you know. He said he would never leave me. He didn't. I got rid of him. Uh, he said that, uh, he you know, thing, the thing about him, I mean, he's very much the same today as he was then. He <laughs> hasn't let insane. money affect him. He mm-hmm. ain't let money affect him. He was That's stupid good. then. He's no. still stupid. I missed that part. And oh, then, that's... you know, the most obvious one is, I mean, look, he he wear the same size shoe. He the same height. Mm-hmm. That, this is a person who's never changed. Uh, what, 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 yeah, I should have done, done my own. Yeah. What would Big Honey say, Uncle, if Big Honey had to be a Big oh, Honey, God. Oh, big oh. Honey. Now, now, let me tell you Ooh. something. For those that don't know who Big Honey is, hold on. She was <coughs> Tommy, Tommy, one of Tommy's ex girlfriend, yep. yeah. right before back he in got the day, married. Boy. Yeah, close on to her day. honey, on her back, her tattoo was a slab of ribs. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Can you used to call her Big? Oh, do you remember Kiwi? Yes, Baby I back. do. Y'all remember yes. Kiwi? Oh, yes, man. I remember Kiwi's Kiwi. Kiwi's tattoo on her back was an ice ex. cream sundae. <laughs> not the fruit, not the kiwi. No, the whole Sunday. Oh, big honey, man. God, dog. Oh. Boy, I had some cold ones, boy. I had some. Ooh, ones. I remember kiwi. She had the short hair. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Big honey's sons jumped on me. <laughs> Don't say nothing else. Yep. We're not going to bring up your exes. Whoop my yep. ass in front of their house, man. Oh, I ain't even got that. Yep, and yep, the eight and nine year old woke his <laughs> Tell it all, don't you? Coming up next, the nephew with the prank phone call right after this. Like he was cat <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject: my wife's young friend. Mm. 
We'll get into it. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? Well, Shirley, a lot of parents hate to hear it. Some of them get the call. You know, it happens uh-huh. sometimes. Your son didn't make the team. I'm going to say it again. Your son oh, wow. didn't make the team. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Miss Lydia This is she, uh, Matt is calling. This is Coach Watkins up at the uh, up at the school. How are you? Hey, Coach Watkins, I'm fine. What can I do for you? Listen, um, we've had Malik out for the last uh, week and a half. He's been coming to practice mm-hmm, uh, yeah. here at the, uh, at the junior high school and um, wanted to reach out and give you a call about everything that's going on. Oh, yeah. Well, I know he's really excited. He can't wait to start the season. He's he's, he's ready. Yeah. He's working all yeah. summer. Well, you know what? I, I, I'll be honest with you. He's a great kid. Yeah. And uh, he's got a good heart. Mm-hmm. And he, he's, he's really, really, really trying and trying to produce as much as possible. Well, you know, he loves the game. And he's been playing since he was a little kid. He, he loves uh, and, uh, Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this is... Uh, you know, this is the seventh grade. This is the first time some of these kids have played um, organized football, and, and this is the first time playing school football. And it's it's a big it's a big transition. That if you've been playing little league ball or pop Warner or whatever you want to call it, it's a mm-hmm. it's a big difference and a big um, transition to go from one to the other. You understand? Yeah, I do understand. But Malik has been working really hard. Yes, yeah, so and he's ready. Well, well, well. Let me let me say this. My main reason for calling you is letting you know that Malik. As of right now, it is is not going to be able to make the cut as far as what you think. Well, he's not going to be able to make the cut as far as being on the team for this year. Now, uh, I, I got. Wait a minute! You said Malik. That, wait, wait. You said that Malik is not going to be able to make the team. You yeah, talking about well, my yeah, son? Malik, he's not going to make the team. He's, he's 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 a great kid. You know, he's a great kid. I know he's a great kid, but. Wait, wait a minute. Now, he didn't play Pop Warner, and he was a starting quarterback. So what are you talking about? He's not going to make the team this year. He was the best they had out on that squad. Okay. And, and you know what? I've, I've heard a lot about him. I heard he did a great job. And, heard about him? You, you, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have you seen his stats? 20 touchdowns in the season? I, I, I understand. What other kids is out there that, doing that? He, but you know what? But right now, we got a lot of different kids that are coming into this particular school. So, you know, the competition has gone greater and greater than what we could possibly understand. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is seventh grade. First of all, everybody makes the team. Nobody gets cut in the first place. You got an A team and a B team. So you telling me my baby ain't made none of them teams? Right right now, Miss Lydia, uh, we, you know, we, we, uh, uh, Malik, like I said, Malik is a great kid. I like it. I know what Malik is. I know that he's a great kid and he's a ball player. Now, I make sure of that. So don't come telling me that he's not good enough to make the cut on on this seventh grade team. Well, don't come right, telling me who. First of all, on. who is the quarterback? Who? Yeah, you tell me what's going on. Who is the quarterback? Well, actually, right now my 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 son is the quarterback. Your son? My, well, I mean, you know, uh, now my son well, hasn't played. Yeah, yet, but son, my son is actually the quarterback. He hasn't done any pop one or anything, but. He, he 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 really has what it takes to be the he's quarterback. He's never played team. football before. In a, or, he's never played organized football. Uh, but he is going to be the quarterback for the seventh grade team. Is that what you're telling me? Well, yeah, my son is actually starting quarterback. But that, but that that's he's neither here nor there. But my son don't make the team, and my son scored twenty <laughs> touchdowns. Twenty <laughs> touchdowns. Is that what you're telling me? Oh hell no! This is the <laughs> I'm calling up to that. <laughs> school tomorrow. I will be up there tomorrow. Well, you no, will no, see no. me tomorrow. Let, let, let me explain something. Uh, what, what no, I, what let I me explain Ms. something Ms. to Ms. you. Ms. Lydia, no, 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 no. I don't know what this is, this nepotism or whatever the f- you got going on around here, but hell no. My son ain't made the f- what? Uh-uh, hell no. Mm-mm-mm-mm. It's going to be smoking the f- city tomorrow when I get up there. Wait, wait, Ms. You Ms. watch. Ms. Ms. Lydia, what I want to say this is this. If your son would take a year oh, off Lord. and try to get himself together and, and get his yeah. fundamentals together, I get think that he'll probably be together. a greater football player when he gets to be uh, headed to the eighth grade. He was the rising star last year. What you talking about his fundamentals together? Your son ain't never even played this. Well, you know what? I've I've, I've worked with my son, and you know, and it, it's a little on, it's a little on. Unawkward for me to try to talk about what my son has done. Hell yeah, but, hell yeah, it's going to be hard for you to talk about because you don't know what your son has done because ain't nobody ever seen your son. You just got this dream. Probably something that you ain't did. You want to live vicariously through him. Hell no. No, that's, that's, that's that is not it. That is not it. I played football in school. I played in high school and 
Let me say this. I'm trying to do the best that I can and the best of my ability to make sure that everybody gets a good and fair shot at what's going on. A fair shot, but he he don't get to play. So what about Malik? Malik don't get no fair shot? Malik Malik don't get to play? It's probably, he'll he'll, he'll, he'll work out to be a better. That's some bull. Throw that to the mother mothers. That's some bull. I bet you, I guarantee you this, my son will be starting this year. I guarantee you this. You don't want none of this. Okay, right now, all I can say is I, I need Malik to actually bring his cliques back. Because my son's going to need him to play in. What? I bought them cleats. Your son ain't getting Your son running down that field, he going to run barefoot. He ain't getting mine. Nothing. Ma'am, from my records, understanding is that the cleats actually came Your from the school. Your records is wrong. Your records is the one that told you that my son can't play. Your records ain't Ain't nobody thinking about your records. You, your mama, and the day she brushed your Ma'am, I'm not going to sit here and go back and yeah. forth with you. All I'm trying to say is this, yeah. is that Malik no, is going to... No, my gonna... son ain't about to do You start looking for a new job. Get your resume together. Hey, you know what, ma'am? I'm not going to go back and forth. I got one more thing I need to say you to you. You ain't got listening. nothing that... You ain't, you ain't got nothing else to say to me. My son will be playing and I'll be up there tomorrow. I have one more thing I need to say to you. Are you listening? only thing you need to tell me is who I need to talk to tomorrow. Now, who? I- I'll let you know that as soon as I tell you this. Are you listening? Oh, uh-huh, I'm listening. What? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your sister Ina got me to prank phone call you. What? <laughs> what the f- Hello? I'm going to be dead. Lydia. I know, I'm going to kick that. <laughs> Man, I thought that was really cold. You got me all hot in here. Hey, <laughs> Woo! You finna yeah. go down to the school oh, then. You finna whoop everybody at the school, wasn't you? Baby, what's going down? <laughs> Oh, man, man, I got something to ask you. <laughs> what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? <laughs> the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you got a long time. Uh-huh. That one right now <laughs> in my new top three. Yeah, right. I love Tom. <laughs> You need to get your resume together because yeah. you're going to need work. Yeah. I ain't been there. You're trying yeah. to live vicariously through him because you ain't. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Because you ain't up. sugar, honey, I used to. <laughs> did not run down this side at all. You but bring, bring his cleats, bring though. Bring the cleats. <laughs> bring the cleats. <laughs> what? Oh, man. What? Every parent of a uh, student athlete is hollering. Oh, man, everybody. Oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody oh. hollering at If you that's involved that's with that's your kid's sports, man, you know man. exactly Winning what that is. Winning touchdowns right last year, <laughs> and he ain't, he ain't make the team. He was the rising <laughs> star. Who is your boy? <laughs> oh, this some of that nepotism bull. Uh-huh, okay. uh-huh. Yes, she did say it. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Tommy, I just don't know how you <sighs> think of this stuff. It's Tommy, so Oh, my God. Tommy, that one right there, that's in my new top three. Yeah. Oh, new man. top three. Oh, like, yeah. Mama. Hey, mama Edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the big time. up to all the coaches that's coaching yeah. all of our yeah. children. We, we yeah. love y'all. We appreciate mm-hmm. y'all, man. We put our kids in y'all's hands, and y'all try to make athletes out of them. So we Damn that. We... If you don't play mine, I'm the lady on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up, uh, coming up, Strawberry Letters subject, my wife's young friend will get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I'm Penelope Spheris. I'm a film director. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Back in the 70s, Peter Ivers moved to L.A. to start his music career. He scored Ron Howard's directorial debut. I didn't know one thing about Peter Ivers. I just said, okay, (laughs) let's meet him. And even hosted a late-night cable TV show. It showcased L.A. punk bands in all their glory. The crowd started getting bigger and bigger, and then there was Beverly D'Angelo. There was John Belushi. But then it all went to hell. He was murdered. Peter Ivers was murdered on March 3rd, 1983. And it raised a question that 40 years later, we still don't know the answer to. Who killed Peter Ivers? Listen to Peter and the Acid King on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Podcasts. 
something about Mary Poppins? Something about Mary Poppins. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. This is fun. I'm AJ Jacobs, and I am an author and a journalist, and I tend to get obsessed with stuff. And my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. We are living in the golden age of puzzles. And now you can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears for 10 minutes or less every day on The Puzzler, short and sweet. I thought to myself, I bet I know what this is. And now I definitely know what this is. This is so weird. This is fun. Let's try this one. <laughs> Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's awful. And I should have seen it coming. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. Guess what? We could be reading your letter live on the air, <laughs> just like you're going to read this one right here. Who knows? Could be yours. You never know. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Subject, my wife's young friend. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for eight years, and my wife has owned a trendy clothing boutique for four years. She decided to hire young, attractive females to represent the type of clothes she sells. The store manager is a gorgeous 28-year-old woman with a banging body. Two years ago, my wife decided to help her pay for body contouring procedures so she can always look great in the clothes at the boutique. I didn't approve, but my wife said it's her money and she did it anyway. My wife also got her a company car to use since she delivers clothes to their VIP customers. I did not like this either, but my wife bought the BMW X3 for her anyway. I also learned that for Christmas, my wife gave this woman a nice bonus for processing the online sales during the pandemic. All of my wife's reasonings for treating her so well make sense, but I'm still looking side-eyed at my wife because they're running around like best friends, going to day parties and brunches on weekends. When I travel for my job, the young lady stays at my house so my wife will not be alone. Most women would not want this gorgeous and super fine woman around her husband, but she spends a lot of time around us. You can only imagine the thoughts that have run through my mind, but I fight the temptation to even look at her perfectly shaped butt and tiny little waist. I wouldn't be surprised if my wife feels the same way about her because our sex life hasn't been the same recently. If they're traveling and staying in one hotel suite together, is it possible that they're more than friends? What do a 54-year-old woman and a 28-year-old woman have in common anyway? Should I question my wife? Please advise. <clears throat> Well, it took you long enough. It took you till the till the end of the letter to figure it out. All the signs are right there. I don't think anyone is that good of friends, okay? Uh, they have to take a break sometimes. Your wife sounds like this girl's sugar mama slash lover to me because she's doing way too much with her. Uh, one tip off should be that she didn't listen to anything you told her about spending money on the young woman. Uh, she bought her a car. What? Um, <laughs> that's a huge expense. And not to mention the nice Christmas bonus she gave her. And then you said it made sense. Come on now. Uh, this is way too just in your face for you not to notice this. And then you say the sex isn't the same between you and your wife. Well, no, that's because she and this younger woman with the banging body, as you call it, are in a relationship. And, and you're in the way. You know, she's, she's just doing it because you're a husband at this point, it sounds like. Should you talk to her? Well, uh, yes, I think you should. And if your wife is honest, which I doubt she'll be, you'll find out out why she wants this super fine woman around her with the tiny waist and the banging body and the perfectly shaped butt because that's her girlfriend okay they're seeing each other steve well how much time i got <laughs> so I'm, 
Uh, I got about three minutes, so let me just go on and do this. The second half of this letter, I'm going to do something special, though. Okay. So let's just talk about this woman who's doing all this for this woman with the banging body. Let's just get to it. Right. Uh, the wife decided to help her pay for body contouring procedures so she can always look great in the uh, clothes at the boutique. boutique. Mm-hmm. That That's why she paid for surgery? Mm. Okay, then let's go down. So my wife also got her a company car uh, to use since she delivers clothes to their VIP customers. I didn't like that either, but my wife bought the BMW X3 for her anyway. Ooh. What? You get that to drop clothes off? <laughs> right. That, that's, that's, that's what you get for dropping clothes yeah. off? Okay. okay. We ain't through. And the then business. for Christmas, my wife gave this woman a nice bonus for processing the online sales during the pandemic. Wait a minute. Ain't 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 that what you supposed to do? Uh-huh. <laughs> but, to keep your business going, right. But if you processing orders during the pandemic, what... What you need a car to drop them off for? Come uh, on, come on. I'm, it's only logic. Come I'm, on. Why we ain't mailing I'm, this? Uh-huh. I'm so damn confused. <laughs> and then you said in the letter, all of my all of my wife's reasoning for treating her so well makes sense. Make makes sense to who, dog? To, not to us, Steve. Because no. I'm confused. If, let me ask you something. If you bought a girl, no, no, no. If you bought a young boy. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Paid for liposuction, gave him some pecs and some biceps. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you turn around and bought a young boy mm-hmm. a damn car so he could look good mm-hmm. dropping off some packages. Mm-hmm. And then if you gave a young boy a Christmas bonus because mm-hmm. he was delivering, making all the processing, all the online sales, and your wife told you not to do any of this, Mm-hmm. But you did it anyway. How would this look? Right. I ain't even going to ask you what would happen if you bought a banging girl a body, Woo. bought a girl a car, and right. gave a girl a Christmas bone. I ain't even going to uh-huh. ask you that. Just if you uh-huh. bought a, a younger dude that. Dog, I don't know what to tell you, but when we come back, <laughs> I'm bringing back my man. Huh. Roscoe Wallace to help you understand what has happened through song. <laughs> he wrote a lot of songs. Oh, through song. And we got okay. some songs to help you with this letter. <laughs> All right. Hang okay. on, Steve. Hang on. Uh, we'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, my wife's young friend. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is my wife's young friend. Hit this man. Got this woman. Now, his wife is 54, mm-hmm. and the girl is 28. She worked for her, so, and she sell young clothing at this boutique for young people. So she got all attractive women working in the store to represent the clothes she sell. But this one girl who's absolutely gorgeous, she done bought her a pay for all her body contouring procedures so she can always look great in the clothes at the boutique. He didn't approve of that. So his wife also got her a company car to use since she deliver clothes to their VIP customers. I ain't like this either. But the wife bought the truck anyway. Then for Christmas, my wife gave this woman a nice bonus for processing online sales during the pandemic. Now, is she processing online sales or is she dropping off stuff with the car? Then he said, my wife's reasoning for cheating her so well makes sense. Boy. <laughs> you, the crazy part, boy, right? So you just try not to mm-hmm. go along with you. You try not to see it. I can only, now the woman is wonderful. What woman brings a fine woman around her husband? She spent a lot of time around us. You can only imagine the thoughts that been running through my mind, but I fight the temptation to even look at her perfectly shaped butt and tiny little waist. Well, you notice what it was. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if my wife or I feel the same way about her because our sex life ain't been the same recently. Mm-hmm. Now, if they traveling and staying in one hotel suite together, is it possible that they're more than friends? Well, let me ask you something. If you got money for surgery 
and you got money to buy a new car, and you got money for Christmas bonuses, mm. how you ain't got money for your own damn hotel room for the girl? <laughs> right. You done bought her everything else, but you just can't buy her her own damn hotel room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sir, mm-hmm. you know what's going on. Well, please, let's welcome to the show the one and only Roscoe Wallace, who has some <laughs> yeah. songs that he wrote. <laughs> I want to hear this. <laughs> what's going on, everybody? I'm Let's back. Go. Where you going? Where, go. where, where is in your world? Way back Wednesday? Yeah. Where you going? <laughs> Throwback Thursday? Throwback Thursday. Throwback Thursday. Uh-huh. Thursday. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I'm here. I wrote some songs in my career. A lot of y'all don't know this white boy right here. Oh, uh, Sanford Townsend Band. They wrote a oh, song man. called Smoke from a Distant Fire, and I wrote this for the dude in the letter. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. You left me here on your way to paradise. Mm. You pulled the rug right out from under my life. <laughs> I know where you're going. I knew when you came home last night. Mm-hmm. And here's what you need to know. Cause your eyes has a mist from the smoke. Of a distant fire. See that what he need to know right there, because there's some smoke going on in a in a in a, in a distant fire right there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you know wow. he having trouble with that. You know, and so his other songs right here, like hold on, let let, let me do this one for you. <laughs> one, two. I'm I'm gonna just start in the middle. Bet you lie awake nights, never rest a bit. Hey. Wishing it would all disappear. Oh, but still the bottom line is you got to deal with it. And to yourself at least be fair. <laughs> Said holding on. Uh, not holding on. Uh, it's very hard to do when love's gone. And that's no lie. I said holding on. Yeah. <laughs> it's no very problem. hard to do. Very, very hard to do uh-huh. when love is gone. You better end it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you that's really another down. hit I wanted to write for you. Yeah. A room is still a room, even when there's nothing there but gloom. <laughs> But a room is not a house, and a house is not a home when the two of us mm-hmm. are far apart, and one of us has a broken heart. It sounds like it hurts. Ooh, it's not that hard. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. See, these yeah. are songs that he need to know because he's struggling. Oh. Uh-huh. You know. <laughs> he really mm-hmm. is. And all is here. Y'all want to know? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay, okay, cool. okay. Hold on, hold on. You took me riding in your rocket. You gave me a star. And then a half a mile from heaven, you dropped me back down to this cold, cold world. I would not do that to a damn dog. Oh, baby. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> these songs, right? See, I wrote all these songs for people like that to get in situations like that. I don't want to stop in and just share my talent and all my gift with people and tell them, hang on in there, but love is gone and it's hard to hold on. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you, flag. Roscoe. Thank you. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at pump it up, pump it up. on Instagram and Facebook. Pull up to the bump. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for a round of Would You Rather. Here we go. Would you rather be alone for the next five years or never be alone for the next five years? This was like just nobody, though. Mm-hmm. Nobody at all. Be. Us yeah. alone. Yeah. No, uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> that would be I the very be. definition. Yeah. Don't give me around. I'm going to get beat. I got, yeah. sleep. We, I got sleep with somebody. I done got tired okay. of me a lot of times. I can't. I can't just be with me. You. I get some. I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Back enough. 
<laughs> what? What? See? I don't talk back enough to myself. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I get tired would of you, me. Would you rather be the richest person in the world? Hey. You don't care. Hey. You don't care. Hey. Hey, I, I don't give a damn what B is. B is, is. <laughs> what's, what's, I don't B is give a damn. B is, would you rather be the smartest person in the world? My stupid no, ass. I no. <laughs> the hell, I want to be the smartest person no. in the world. I'm offended. I watched Jeopardy that time when that dude had won 19 times in a row. I was offended uh-huh. the entire time. Why? 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 Stupid Why? ass. You ain't riding no bike when you was a little boy. Where was your truck at? You don't date nobody? Because for you to know that much. He uh-huh. didn't have a childhood. Uh-huh. Dog. I mean, dog. Yeah. All right. Moving on to would you rather have sex the night before or would you rather wake up to sex? A and B. The night before <laughs> sex. The night before what? <laughs> the night before, the night. just before, yeah, the, at night. Would you rather have sex at yeah, night? Yeah, I'm usually up. I got to go, so yeah, I'll take it at night. <laughs> you take it at night. <laughs> it, it don't really matter. As long as it's happening, just... It's happening. Okay, yeah, now, that's what you said, yeah. I don't really have to go to sleep. I would rather be put to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Knock my ass. <head. laughs> All right, last one, guys. Here's a Halloween question. Would you rather spend Halloween night at a funeral home or would you rather spend Halloween night at a cemetery? Mm. They, they all dead in here. You know that. No, yeah. no. Give me that cemetery. Them people at that funeral home, they be moving still. Yeah, I'm going uh, to be, be outside. <laughs> no. You can run what? at the cemetery. You might slam up into a couple of tombstones, but I'm not fitting to be in here and hear noises. In here. Uh, could you uh, uh, What do you mean uh, they can could you move work at one? the funeral home? Hey, when the funeral moving. director come back that morning, he's going to put all them bodies back up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, who tore these curtains down like this? <laughs> Why is no paneling on the wall? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I'm Penelope Spheris. I'm a film director. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Back in the 70s, Peter Ivers moved to L.A. to start his music career. He scored Ron Howard's directorial debut. I didn't know one thing about Peter Ivers. I just said, okay. <laughs> Let's meet him. And even hosted a late night cable TV show. It showcased LA punk bands in all their glory. The crowd started getting bigger and bigger, and then there was Beverly D'Angelo. There was John Belushi. But then it all went to hell. Peter was murdered. Peter Ivers was murdered on March 3rd, 1983. And it raised a question that 40 years later, we still don't know the answer to who killed Peter Ivers listen to Peter and the Acid King on the iHeartRadio app Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts something about Mary Poppins something about Mary Poppins exactly (laughs) oh man this is fun I'm AJ Jacobs, and I am an author and a journalist, and I tend to get obsessed with stuff. And my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. (laughs) Oh, that's good. That's good. We are living in the golden age of puzzles, and now you can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears for 10 minutes or less every day on The Puzzler, short and sweet. I thought to myself, I bet I know what this is, and now I definitely know what this is. This is so weird. This is fun. Let's try this one. (laughs) Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's awful, and I should have seen it coming. All right, guys, time now for Comedy Roulette. J. Anthony Brown, please explain. It's very simple, very, very simple. You take three (laughs) subjects, put them on a wheel, spin it, where it stops. Because we're comedians, professional comedians, Mm -hmm. we can make it funny. Watch us do it. Watch us do it. All right. Okay. 
he's, here are the categories. Uh, embarrassing things kids say. Embarrassing things kids say. Excuses people say to eat stuff they're not supposed to. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> the doctor said it was okay. All right. Uh, and uh, made up conspiracy theories. Made up conspiracy theories. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Spin the wheel. See, we See where it stops. It stopped. Right. It stopped on embarrassing things kids say. Embarrassing things kids oh. say. Embarrassing things kids say. Here we go. Comedy roulette. Hey, mama, how come my little brother look like Uncle Kenny? Oh, uh-uh. that oh. I need to- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Embarrassing things kids say. Hey, look, everybody. He got something on his lip. It looked like it burned. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing things kids say. Daddy, why is our neighbor over here? I, I thought you didn't like him. Boy. Embarrassing things kids say. <laughs> My mama going to be a minister because she called Jesus a lot at night. Oh, <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> Embarrassing things kids say. Daddy, I thought you said grandmama breath smell like boo boo. You said oh. that. I heard oh. you say <laughs> Okay. See this <laughs> this, this embarrassing things kids say is this was actually was a true statement my nephew actually made. Hey Uncle Kier, how come you and Uncle Steve don't have the same money? Y'all do the same thing. <laughs> take, take your ass in the room. Right of your now. Thank you so much, Kier. <laughs> Worry about that. Hey, Shut up. You eat, don't you? Wow. All right, saw, Steve. I saw this one before. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing things kids say. Mama, oh, yeah. my thing won't go down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's embarrassing. That's pretty that's bad. Embarrassing. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a little boy do that in the grocery store one time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to laugh my ass off. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Here we go. Embarrassing things kids say. Mm-hmm. You were talking a whole lot of chat before that white man came over here. Why are you changing your <laughs> mind now? <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing things kids say. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey. Hey, Michelle, how you doing? Lisa just left. Ooh, well, y'all see each other? Hey, get your ass what? in the damn room. Quit talking. Play a player. Not speak. Embarrassing things, kids. Say, Mama, your wig is crooked again. Yeah. Quiet. I want to straighten it. <laughs> All right, come on, Steve. Okay, Embarrassing Steve. things kids say. Last one. <laughs> Mama, when I opened the door last night, why was Daddy on his knees in the bed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's embarrassing. Yeah. That's pretty that's embarrassing. embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Daddy. How do you Daddy. answer go ahead, that? <laughs> All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's Comedy Roulette from the guy. Yeah, we do it. <laughs> we'll be back with more of today's trending stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We all know that Halloween is right around the corner, right? Well, according yep, to yep. CNET, yeah, CNET.com, watching a horror or a scary movie, a scary movie can actually de-stress you. 
what? What? <laughs> it can act- actually de-stress you. That's what it says. This is I according to. I want to make to- a statement as we read this on behalf of everybody on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The following <laughs> statement that Shirley Strawberry is about to make is a white statement. It very <laughs> much is. Thanks. 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 Off Thanks. of uh, so cnet.com. <laughs> All right, listen. So they say apparently watching horror movies allows you to forget your own daily fears and worries and get totally involved in other people's fears and worries. It's it both. But if you both, scared though, <laughs> you make other right. people's fears. That's your other fear, <laughs> right? I'm already you. stressed now. I'm watching a movie stress me out because. I'm scared now. Mm -hmm. It distracts you from your anxiety. It puts you, uh, your own problems in perspective. The world may be a mess. Politics may be stressful. And your job may be terrible, but at least a psycho killer isn't chasing you around with an axe. And that relaxes you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Every time I see Jason, I get sleepy. Yeah. (laughs) Put you you in a woo-sa mood. All right. <laughs> We're I'm moving on. Watching polar guys come out TV. Now I'm sitting over here. I'm looking at my TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're not relaxed. Here. You're here. Coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Come on, Steve. J. Anthony Brown is here to murder another hit. Ladies what? and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm on a delay. Yes, you are. He is here. (laughs) Don't be alarmed. I was doing something. And we're doing something. It's called your show. (laughs) Your radio. (laughs) Guess what? Do it. (laughs) Hi, everybody. Why are you out of breath? I was just out of breath from following following Steve. (laughs) First, I did the Ken do. That took a lot of breath. (laughs) You know what? Yeah, not letting all of that. Hi, everybody. It's Halloween. Here's a Halloween. Did it for you on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All age, in a rage, they be dressing, screaming, going, lying, nice try. Why, guy, trick or treating is a child thing. Such a scary face. Hey, you hey. can bet I'll be set. The J, the A, funny, the brown, the spot, y'all. But I don't want to brag. Too many, baby. Too many, baby. Right there, Jay. I'm gonna play it at my wife's uh, Halloween carnival in the backyard. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that she's throwing yeah. for all the grandkids. That's gonna be great. I'm gonna play. Too many babies. Baby. Damn, I hate Halloween. <laughs> I'm gonna play that. Too many babies. I'm gonna play that in the backyard speakers <laughs> at my wife's. Wait a Do minute. Me, <laughs> my wife <laughs> went all in for these grandkids. She went all in. Oh, that's that's so adorable. I told you, it's a whole nother experience line. I told you. I'm telling you, it will be in my neighborhood, it probably will be 10,000 kids that come over in, in the mine area. too. That's wow. 10,000. 10, 10, easy. 10,000 kids. That's man. a lot of kids. Hey, this year, I'm going to dress up All right, healthy. Up. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I'm Penelope Spheris. I'm a film director. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Back in the 70s, Peter Ivers moved to LA to start his music career. He scored Ron Howard's directorial debut. I didn't know one thing about Peter Ivers. I just said, okay, (laughs) let's meet him. And even hosted a late night cable TV show. It showcased LA punk bands in all their glory. The crowd started getting bigger and bigger and then there was Beverly D'Angelo. There was John Belushi. But then it all went to hell. Peter was murdered. Peter Ivers was murdered on March 3rd, 1983, and it raised a question that 40 years later, we still don't know the answer to. Who killed Peter Ivers? Listen to Peter and the Acid King on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, here we are at the final break of the day with just one more thing. Steve's closing remarks. What do you have for us say? Uh, 
what do you have for us today, sir? Your wisdom, drop it. Okay, uh, today, I thought I'd talk to you about something with a, with a little bit different angle to it. It's going to be positive, but I want to talk to you about something that many people consider negative. I want to talk to you today about disappointment because I think that we all have to grapple with disappointment from time to time. Uh, the problem with disappointment is that disappointment also, if you don't understand it, disappointment can turn so ugly so fast. Too many people allow disappointment to turn into resentment. Too many people allow disappointment to turn into uh, a, a final uh, verdict, so to speak. In other words, you know, so many people think that this disappointment uh, for them symbolizes the end. When you allow for disappointment to turn into resentment and you allow disappointment to turn into the final verdict, you're losing what disappointment actually can become for you. And I want you all to start looking at disappointment as motivation. How many times have you been faced with something that was disappointing? Let's say you go in to get a job and you're on your last interview. And I have been in this position, man. I was trying to get an insurance job one time years ago. And I went in and I had gotten gone through about three or four interviews. I was at my final interview. And I said, man, I'm about to get this job, man. Get my little family together. I'll be all right. And got to that interview and they told me no. And the reason they gave me for not hiring me was I had moved too many times over the past seven years. And that represented to their company a sign of unstableness. That disappointment for me was gut-wrenching. I actually got in my car, my little 72 Chevy, and I was driving off, man. And, and tears was in my eyes when I got up on the freeway and I drove back and I looked back over at that big building with that big powerful name on it. And I had gone through four interviews and I and all of a sudden I was so disappointed and not got getting hired. But you know what I learned to do, though, from that moment on, I turned all my disappointment into motivation. I said, OK, now this might not be right for everybody, but. I use it as a challenge. I use all my disappointments as, okay, I'll show you. I use them all as motivation. From the time my teacher told me that you ain't going to never be nothing, that there's no way they'll put somebody like you on TV because you have a stuttering problem and you can't even talk. I said, okay, but who are you who is issuing out this disappointment? Because you're not going to make me resent you. And you're not going to cause me to think that you're denying me this opportunity or you handing me this bad news of disappointment. I'm not going to allow you to be my final verdict. You will not be the truth teller in my life. You are not going to be the person who's, who, are, who is the author of my destiny. You are not it. That belongs to God, not you. And I will not give that to anyone. So when you're facing disappointment, do not hand that disappointment over to the person who gave it to you in the form of empowerment. Do not allow them to, to, to control your destiny with this one piece of disappointment that causes you to go into such resentment that you become bitter, that all of a sudden now, all you think about is that, and you, be, get, you develop this nasty attitude. You don't have to do that. And you also don't have to let them become the final verdict. They are not the author of your destiny. They are not the author of your future. They are not. That belongs to God and only God. Don't let them trip you up. And I'm saying this because I've had many, many, many disappointments. You ain't this. You ain't that. I've had shows canceled, gigs taken. I've been fired from radio. I've been all of that. Oh, I've had some disappointing setbacks. But let me tell you something I've learned to do. I've learned to take all those setbacks and use them as motivation. And I just quietly say to myself, you ain't my God. You ain't the author of my destiny. You didn't create me. You
you don't know me. You you have no say so in the real outcome of who I'm going to be and what I'm going to turn myself into. It's not you. And I'll not give you the power to do that to me. You who think you have the power by telling me no, by turning me down, by refusing me, by voting against me, by saying that I'm not the right one for the part. They're saying that your company don't need a person like me by telling me that I represent an unstable person, by telling me that I don't have what it takes. No, 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 no. It's just because you don't know. Because you don't know what God really has for me. And that ain't your fault. So why bear resentment for these people who are causing this disappointment in your life? You don't have to do that because they are not the author of your destiny. And don't you dare give them that. You take that disappointment and you use it as the motivation. I feel sorry for people who tell me no, because you know what I know? I know they just don't know what God has for me. And I end up somehow, through God's grace and mercy, showing them all. Keep the right attitude, y'all. God got something for you through all your disappointments. Y'all have a great weekend, okay? For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I'm Penelope Spheris. I'm the host of a new podcast about the life and death of Peter Ivers. Peter was the host of a TV show featuring prominent L.A. punk bands until he was murdered in 1983. Forty years later, we dive into that music scene and the mystery of his passing. Listen to Peter and the Acid King on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I'm AJ Jacobs, and my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Something about Mary Poppins? Exactly. <laughs> this is fun. You can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears. Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The system's broken. I said, something's wrong here, you know, whenever a woman's allowed to kill my two kids. Unrestorable is a new true crime podcast that investigates the case of Catherine Hoggle, a mother accused of murder. Despite signs that Catherine Hoggle took her tiny children one by one into the night, never to come home again, she has yet to stand trial. Listen to Unrestorable on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Calling all podcasters. The 2024 iHeart Podcast Awards are coming. This is the chance to nominate your podcast for the industry's biggest award. Submit your podcast for nomination now at iHeart.com slash podcast awards. But hurry, submissions close on October 8th. Hey, you've been doing all that talking. It's time to get rewarded for it. Submit your podcast today at iHeart.com slash podcast awards. That's iHeart.com slash podcast awards.